Hello lovely people, welcome to the Geek Cupboard, I'm Penge and welcome to Writer's Rush, a game where we become an author with the goal of becoming the best writer in the entire world. If we're going to do it, we're going to go and do it properly I suppose. So as you might imagine, because we're an author we write books, of course we do, we choose the themes and the endings of our stories, we create our characters, we can interact with other writers to maybe work with them on some projects, we receive letters from people who like our work and also we receive letters from people who don't like our work very much, which I suppose is fair enough, we deal with random events that pop up, and hopefully we can produce a few classics along the way, which would be marvellous. I think it sounds really interesting, it sounds great, because you don't really see very many games about writing books. It's not a thing that video games cover very often, is authoring books, and I do like a good book, I enjoy a nice read, preferably with a cup of tea and a nice bit of cake or some biscuits or whatever, something to snack on to complement the tea as you read your book, but yes, I do enjoy a good book. So here we go, without any further ado, let's jump in and get writing, shall we? Okay, job number one, character creation, which is always fun, isn't it? So here we go, our author character has to have a name, a gender, an age, and then we need to pick a personality type. They do look very intriguing, but we'll come to them in a bit. Let's do the basics first, shall we? So who do we play as for our authoring game here? I think really there is only one person that we could possibly play as. One person who's got a wealth of experience behind her. So many different things have happened to this character. They've been in the future. They've been in the apocalypse. They've been in medieval times. They've done many, many things. It is, of course, the one, the only, the brilliant Betty Cupboard. We have to play is Betty. She's seen so much during her time in the cupboard. She's got so many things to write about. She can write many wonderful books, I think. So we will play as Betty, and Betty is a female character. I don't see Betty as being 25 years old. I see Betty as being a little bit older than that. She's got more years behind her, more experience. Let's make Betty under 38. That'll do. The slider stopped on 38. That will do. There we go. So 38 years old, Betty Cupboard is going to be our writer. Now, what do we do with personality type? What do we do with this? So I don't see Betty as being a regular personality type, but okay, what does it mean for the game? No extra changes. Build your character as you play. Okay, so if we pick pedantic, again, which I don't think Betty is. Okay, so if we were to play a pedantic character, they're better at researching, editing and writing, but they have a massive penalty to speed, of course, because they're being more pedantic about things. They're being really kind of picky about the speed they're doing stuff, but they're very good at some of the other things they do do, like writing, editing and researching, because they're really kind of picky about things. Okay, right, that makes sense. I don't see that being Betty's personality, though. Student, what does that do? Very, very, very good at research, but not very lucky and not very quick. Creator. Maybe that's what Betty would be. Very good at sci-fi. Okay. So that's one of the sort of writing genres, I imagine. And they're a little bit quicker, but they're not very good at researching. Romantic? I don't see Betty being romantic. But yeah, if you did pick romantic, better at drama, not very good at editing. And you have a skill of luck that affects everything, actually. It says that, okay. Or a slacker. Betty definitely is not a slacker. So they're really lucky. If you're a slacker, you have supreme luck, but you're terrible at researching, writing, and editing. All the things that you need to actually become a writer. Okay, I think maybe let's go for creator. Betty has created many things in the past. So we'll go for creator. Do we get to pick what Betty looks like? That'd be amazing. Ah, no, right, okay. They're kind of little kind of pre done templates. Okay, there are some wonderful templates in here. You've got a very good beard. That's a very good beard, sir. Okay, so we've got you two here. And then we've got are there many other women. There's only four women in this thing. There's a disproportionate amount of male templates as opposed to female templates. But okay, um, which one would look like Betty? I would say possibly that one. That looks a bit Betty-ish. Let's go for that one. Yeah, okay. Choose that avatar, please. Yeah, choose you. So there we go. There is 38-year-old Betty Cupboard, who is a creator, and we are ready to go. Come on, Betty, let's go and write some classic books. Okay, here we go. Level six. Okay, so we've started at level six, have we? Okie doke. And I think these are our rival writers. So there's Betty there with the orangey kind of background. Unfortunately, not Geek of a Corporate Colours, but never mind. We'll let it slide game. And then we've got Andre Volkovsky over there. Daniel Mitchell and Sophia Collins. So I assume they're our writing rivals. And the goal is to score the most prestige points. Okay, two players with the most prestige points progress to level five. Level five, we're on level six. Okay, we must count down. 
we must count down rather than up, I imagine. But okay, right, hopefully the game is going to help us out with this because I've got no idea what we're doing. So let's press the button and see what happens. Start the race. Welcome to Writer's Rush. Thank you very much. To pass level six, you must score more prestige points than the other players. Okay, there's the prestige points just there. They're mainly awarded for writing books. Okay, that's good because we're an author and we can do that. The better the book, the more prestige points you get. Makes perfect sense. Let's take a look at the game's navigation. Fine. <laughs> Not okay or yay, let's go. Fine. Fine, like a kind of a grumpy teenager. Fine, whatever. Okay, so prestige, money, audience. That allows us to write a book. Ah, it's currently the 12th of February in the year 1996. Good grief, we've gone back away. Okie doke. Um, weeks into the next stage. Ah, okay. So we're on week six. Are we out of 208? And then I imagine we sort of work out who's got the most prestige and we go through to stage five or whatever, level five. Okay, number of errors. Okay, right, that's that's going to get quite high. Maybe make that box a bit wider. Some buttons. Okay, thank you, game. Uh, current level of the players. The chart showing all the changes. Okay, that's going to have wibbly lines on it. Game log, mailbox. Okay, that's where we sort of you know, pick up our mail and such like. And our ratings down here. Okay, are we up against Shakespeare? It might be a bit of a push to knock Shakespeare off the top spot. Um, yeah, so Shakespeare has got the top five in Hamlet, Othello, Romeo and Juliet, King Lear and the Merchant of Venice. I mean, you know, are they all that, really? Are they all that? Will he amount to anything Shakespeare? Yeah, probably just a flash in the pan. Okay, right, so many things are going to happen. You start playing in 1996, yes, so I see, at level six, okie doke. After four years which I think is that counter there. Players who score more prestige points progress to level five. To write the first book, then you can press that button there. Um, oh, oh, look at this. This is wonderful. The game is explicitly telling us. I don't even need to ask. I can very happily confirm right now that spacebar is pause. Look, it says there, pause, continue, confirm, space. Oh, well done, game. Good job. Okay, let's dive in, shall we? So, oh. It's counting down. Whoever is last is a foot. Okay, pause time immediately. And I thought we gathered serious writers here or whatever Daniel Mitchell just said. Stop, stop being mean already. Good grief. Um, okay, let's write a book, shall we? Um, oh, hang on, Paul. We've got a letter from there. Welcome to Writer's Rush. For over 300 years, the tireless and mysterious Wally Mad Dog Shakespeare don't call him Wally, has been winning the writing competition. Everyone fears him, but no one can challenge him. What do you mean for 300 years? We don't worry about the books. We worry about his, like, you know, fountain of youth he's got in his house or the picture he's got in his attic or whatever that's looking really awful. Your ultimate task is to defeat him and take first place in the tournament. You start at level six. In four years, there'll be a rotation and you'll have a chance to move to level five. Good luck. Okay, right, so get rid of that, because now I've read that. Let's write a book, shall we? Okay, we had a boost to sci-fi, so let's write some sci-fi classics, shall we? Uh, we can't do comedy. We're not very good at comedy. I kind of see that with Betty. I see that with Betty. Betty's quite sort of, you know, to the point. Matter of fact, get there, get it done. Good imagination. She can you know, craft many things. She's crafted all sorts of things over her time in the cupboard. But I don't see her doing too much in the way of comedy. So yeah, we'll make a sci-fi thing. Oh, okay. We can pick a theme. Okay. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, there's so many. And these are locked away. 1920s. Crime elves. It's a shame they're not one thing. That'd be brilliant. Uh, school, religion, loneliness. Okay, so there's some like generic topics, like animals. And there's some very sort of particular things like loneliness or love triangles. Uh, okay, so we're going to have... A science fiction, what's going to go well? I mean, a science fiction time travel book might go quite well as a starter. Parallel worlds, actually. Maybe. There could be parallel Bettys. Okay. Uh, right. Parallel worlds. Yes, please. Uh, make it available to everybody. Age. Is that everybody as well? I imagine that's all people. So that's going to be... Oh, here we go. Yeah, all. Okay. So kids, young adults, uh, adults or seniors. I mean, I don't know, would, if we're going on about a science fiction thing that's got parallel universes in, would kids aged tw 8 to 12 want to read that? Young adults, or is it just an adult book? I mean, it could be. Can it be more than one? Can it just not be aimed for the kids? I'll do it for everybody for now. It's fine. Um, interest, 
Question mark, question mark, question mark. Okay, with all genders, all ages. It's a book for all people. It's a book for all time. Uh, Sci-fi, parallel worlds. Right. 56 weeks it's going to take. Oh, okay, right. So time is going to fly by. It's going to take over a year to write that. Conduct research, 43 weeks. Okay, no. Conduct research, 56 weeks. Again, like we said earlier, if we're going to do it, let's do it properly. And now... We have to draft a title for this. Okay, so what do we call our sci-fi book about parallel worlds? What's going to make a good thing? How about, let's call it, do you know what? We'll call it The Many Geek Cupboards. Because if there's you know, parallel worlds, maybe there are many geek cupboards out there. Maybe in one of them you've got, you know, Fenge. You've got Fenge saying, hello, wonderful people. Welcome to the Geek Cupboard. I am Fenge, and we're going to play this today. I mean, that may be the many geek cupboards. It can be a tale of many geeky cupboards. Let's go for that, shall we? <laughs> that sounds fun. Okay, so now what do we do? Oh, okay. Research is happening. Right, ah, here we go. We're doing... Re oh, cry okay, right, hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> right. Time goes by remarkably quickly in this game. Already... We're on week 14. Okay, right, we're still... Ah, we're creating a bibliography. Okay, can we go on one speed, please? Searching for similar literature, collecting information. I still think we're researching. We're researching, I think. So they're writing. I think we're doing research first. Okay, so research completed. The following modifiers have been changed. Okay, so sci-fi and parallel worlds is a perfect combination. It's one of these games. It's one of these games where you kind of, you know, you pick topics and, and sort of genres and things. You mix things together. We played a few of these in the past, haven't we? And they're always quite fun. Parallel worlds and all will have a moderate effect on sales. Plus, plus. That's quite good. In Lewis Carroll's novel, Through the Looking Glass, the heroine enters a parallel world where everything is reversed. All these little kind of factoids going on. So what does it do for us in game? So we're going to have less errors. That's quite good. And we've picked up 789 research experience, 13% writing experience, and we've picked up 15% speed. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, the others, I think, haven't started, uh, have started writing. They didn't do any research. So we're behind in terms of our writing, but we have done some research. And it means it's going to have less errors and we can do it a bit quicker. Okay, the protagonist gender. Um... Okay, well, shall we go for what we said? <laughs> we'll go for what we said. Um, we can't change that, I don't think. Why can't we change that? I, I want to change that, but I don't seem to be able to, which is a bit of a shame. Um, oh, and then we get... Ah, we get the sliders. Okay, so the plot, the dialogues, and the setting. Uh, I mean, they're all important. They're all important. Dialogue is important, but yeah, the plot for a sci-fi book has got to be pretty good, hasn't it? So if we up that to 40, and then maybe split the other two like that, so 40, 30, 30, the protagonist name, um, I mean, it's slightly self-aggrandizing, but given that I am in the geek cupboard right this moment, uh, let's have, let's have Penge. We'll, we'll have me for this one, and then we'll put, yeah, we'll do other people for the next ones, but there we go. Yeah, I don't know why I can't change the protagonist gender. I think Betty's just decided that that's going to be it. Yeah, okay. Oh, look. We're in the lead. We've picked up 170 prestige because we've put some effort in already. Rather than you lot just diving in and starting scribbling, we've taken our time. We've bothered to do research. We've been thorough with this. Um, okay, yeah, there you go. So Penge can do this. Oh, oh my goodness me. There is a lot to do. Um, okay, so emotional tension or action. I see it as more of an exciting kind of action-y book. So let's bring it down to... 70% action, 30% on emotional tension. So sensuality, deep feelings, and romantic relationships. I mean, maybe drop it even more. Maybe drop it. It's a sci-fi book about parallel worlds, about a guy who talks himself in a tiny room called the Geek Cupboard. Uh, let's let's bring that down a bit. Intimacy or epic. Uh, again, sci-fi. Bring it down a bit. Bring it down a bit. Maybe 30%. Make it all sort of a great big, fantastic kind of epic sci-fi, you know, rip-roaring adventure type thing. Simple plot, complex plot. Make it a little bit complicated, given it is about sort of parallel worlds and such like. Possibly make it slightly more complex. That might work quite well. It seems weird you can have simple plot. that I thought it would be one or the other. So yeah, it's either a simple plot or a complex plot. 
you can't have linear structure with a twisted structure. It doesn't really work. But okay, so that looks pretty good. So now, oh, Andrei Volkovsky challenges you to a duel. He bets $620. We've got no money, though. You and Andrei Volkovsky are making a bet. No, we're not. If the rating of your next book is higher than the rating of your opponent's next book, you will receive 620 money. If he writes a book with a higher rating, you will lose 620 money. Do you know what, Andre? Yeah, all right, fine, let's go for it. Let's do this. So there you go, interactions with the other writers. Okay, so challenge to a duel, prestige goes up a little bit more. So we're now just working on this. We're defining the main characters, creating a synopsis, formulating the main conflicts, choosing a narrative perspective. I don't know what that is. That's the perspective narrative. Plot selection, oh, there's loads going on. This is brilliant. Based on your selected genre and theme, as well as your abilities, the following plots are available. We get to see little individual plots. Oh, this is wonderful. Okay, so the Mirror World plot is set in the year 2150. Penge, a brilliant 29-year-old programmer. Uh, I mean, yeah, you've got my age wrong there. I'm 21, again. Creates a virtual world which reflects every event taking place in reality. He lives in a small apartment in the metropolis. Pale Reflection. Penge is a 35-year-old psychotherapist. His patients complain of seeing their own shadows that move independently of them. Okay, I don't see that being sort of, you know, parallel world type thing. Or Lost Son. A 40-year-old Penge wanders the worlds in search of his son. I like Mirror World. That sounds exciting. Not because it calls me brilliant and also 29, but because that seems to be a little bit more sort of parallel world type thing. But the parallel world is a virtual world, possibly. Okay, do you know what? Yeah, let's go down that one. Let's go for a mirror world plot. So now there's an exposition, the description of key events. Um, what is this? What's this line here? Oh, that's showing people's prestige. That's showing the prestige look. So yeah, that's showing where we are. So we are currently on 450. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. Sophia just nipped up a bit there. Um, okay. Uh, for the selected plot, the following scenarios are available. Ah, right, okay, so the end of the book. The end of the book, what happens? So, uh, hacking. A hacker from the virtual world cause, uh, changes the code, which causes chaos in the real world. Oh, that could be quite good. So rather than being a multiverse thing, the parallel worlds are the real world and the virtual world. But then, yes, the hacker can cause chaos in the real world. Second chance. Penge finds a way to enter the virtual world to correct the mistakes of the past in reality. Okay, that's quite deep, isn't it? Mirror War. The virtual and real worlds begin to merge, causing conflicts and fight for control. AI. Penge creates an artificial intelligence to fight chaos in the virtual world, but the AI begins to act independently. Okay, so the Skynet plot. Or Virtual Resurrection. Penge meets a deceased lover in the virtual world and tries to bring her back to reality. That never goes well in anything. That never ends well. <laughs> See dredge for that kind of thing. Um, okay, I quite like that. Again, the first one. So a hacker changes the code, which causes chaos in the real world. So it's kind of, you know, merging. What is this? What's that? Bad climax. One of the climaxes will be received by readers worse than the rest. Um, oh. Oh, I see. Right. So one of these is bad. I think maybe, maybe that one would be bad. Would that one be bad? We're going to go for hacking. Let's go for hacking. So there we go. That's quite fun. So there'll be like a naughty hacker in the virtual world. Okay. Yes, we'll go for that, please. Is that a good one? Was that good? Do we get anything? Okay. Another 100 prestige because we've done that. And we're writing 15% quicker, aren't we? Because we did our research. Okay. So what are we doing now? We are creating conflict situations. We're detailing the climax of the story, working out the reactions, ending selection. Okay, so we've got the plot, we've got the climax, now we've got the ending. Okay, so the destruction. Penge loses control of the virtual world, which leads to a catastrophe in reality. Um, okay, ending type bonus. What does that do? If you select this ending, you'll get plus one point to your book rating. Oh... But I think maybe we don't know what these are yet. We want to pick a tragic ending. Okay. Uh, I mean, destruction is quite tragic. A catastrophe in reality. So we lose control of the virtual world. Loneliness. Penge is left alone in a destroyed virtual world, breaking away from reality. Oh, that's quite tragic, isn't it? Rescue. 
Penge and his team managed to regain control of the virtual world and restore order in reality. No, that's not tragic enough. Loss. Penge loses all his loved ones in a fight against chaos, remaining alone in a broken reality. Oh, that's sad. Oh, poor virtual Penge in this game. Or eternal oblivion. Penge remains in the virtual world, searching for a way to fix everything. His fate remains unknown. Maybe if we're looking for a tragic ending to get plus one book rating, we should go for loss. Let's go for that. So Penge does what he can, but you know, loses all his loved ones in the fight against the chaos caused by the hacker. Yeah, let's go for that one. Sorry, in-game book Penge. You're going to suffer some loss, I'm afraid. We're on 600 prestige. Sophia's on oh, 380. She leapt to 270 and 210 for Daniel down there. Come on, Daniel. Come on, you can do this. Okay, so have we got anything else to do? Have we got another sort of decision to make or whatever? I'm not quite sure. Errors are creeping up, but there will be less errors for us than other people. Writing completion. Almost done. You can publish your book right away or get it edited first. I think we should probably edit it first because there are 51 errors. Okay. So start editing. What does that, what's that button do? What does that do? Uh, oh, oh, I see we can pay somebody to do the editing. Oh, I see. So we can't pick you because we haven't got 150. Minutes. Okay, we've got to do it ourselves then. Okay, <laughs> we can create two errors a week. Is that right? Uh, okay, two months. Yeah, hang on. So I think we have to pick us. So select us. Start editing. So here we go. Let's try and bring down the number of errors, shall we? Just because we don't want it to be rubbish. We lost 100 prestige there. I'm not quite sure why, but 46 errors. They've lost it as well. Ah, because they're editing. Okay. Bestseller. J.D. Ballin released Oliver and the Secrets of the Asylum, which became a real hit. Perhaps we're dealing with the ebook that will change the world. Congratulations, J.D. Ballin. But you're none of these people. Daniel Mitchell's leapt up into second place you have pulled your socks up good grief okay so drama sales are going to go up by 10 percent um what's everybody writing can we look can we sort of see can we scroll about this thing ah okay yeah so i can't see what they're doing i can't see what they're up to uh so we've got a sci-fi book uh sophia collins has a family sci-fi book okay i think is Andrei Volkovsky also right? Oh, hang on, down here, look. So we've got sci-fi UFO, sci-fi family, sci-fi parallel worlds. What's Daniel Mitchell writing? Daniel Mitchell has started writing the ending. Uh, oh, here we go. Daniel Mitchell is writing a drama many... Oh, botherations. He's, he's got the drama boost from the drama thing we just saw. Okay, never mind. Right, get time ticking on. Copyright verification. Okay. Editing complete, we could go and edit it again. 56.25%. It'll take a little while to edit it again, I think, but it's probably worth doing. So we're losing prestige because we're trying to make the book better, which is a bit of a shame. That seems a bit harsh to me, but there we go. Ah, okay. Photon Rift has been published, and now Sophia is writing the next book. Okay, I think we need to publish this. 33 errors. But let's see how we do. 56.25% good. <laughs> I mean, it's over half. It's fine, isn't it? Right, publish. Okay, we got 300 prestige. Um, is that all? Because she appears to have 1,338 prestige to Sophia Collins. Uh, okay, but we have picked up some speed experience, writing, research, and editing. Okay, right, so okay that. The critic reviews are out. Fellow reading a draft. A bit weak to, to be considered great sci-fi. The author couldn't have chosen a better theme and genre. Okay, that's quite good. Thank you, Quill and Query. Some constructive feedback rather than these guys. Okay, uh, what do common readers think? Read it, forgot it. Next, this book gave me my new favourite character. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, it would have made a great comic book. Seriously. Okay, Bookworm 200. Okay, fine. Noted. Okay, so what do we do then? So did we? Right, pause time. Pause time. Things are happening. Uh, right, Paul. Hello, dear Betty Cupboard. Congratulations on publishing your first book. It turned out pretty good. I will be happy to follow your work. 
Okay, thanks for your review, Paul. Oh, and there's a rude word there. Crosby says, my goodness. <laughs> no, hang on, Nash says, goodness me, that's cool. Thanks for your review. Okay, so best of stage one. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on. Her book only got a 1.6. Oh, maybe she's already up there. I know, hang on, we've got 1,834 now. We've got many, many points more than you. But um, yes, maybe you got some because you started writing a new book maybe as well. You're writing a sci-fi city book. Um, okay, did we beat... Has he published his book yet, Chappie? Has he published it? Uh, I think we need to get writing another one. So let's get writing another book. We'll, again, we'll stick with sci-fi. We know what we're doing with sci-fi. So sci-fi parallel words, right? Three pluses, that's a good combo. That's a good combo. What else is going to go well? Science fiction, cyberpunk. That could go quite well, couldn't it? Or technologies. Um, yeah, science fiction and technologies might go well. Um, if we write it for everybody again, that'll be okay. Interest still not quite got that sorted, but okay. Um, yep, do research, 52 weeks. Uh, right, what do we call this one then? So sci-fi about technologies. What do we call this? I think we're going to call our book Jeff Robot and the Flashy Lights because flashy lights are themselves technology, of course. You can't have flashy lights without technology. And Jeff Robot, our main character, is also technology, but is he a person as well? Is he an individual? Is he conscious? That could be what the book is about if the game lets us do that because of course we get given the kind of predefined plots and endings and that kind of stuff but that's kind of what I'm thinking now so it's kind of a clash of is Jeff Robot just technology or is Jeff Robot an individual that kind of thing so yeah Jeff Robot and the flashy lights it also does sound like a weird futuristic band but okay so we are now on 3,400 we're flying up in terms of these do we get money for sales oh yeah uh, money for sales we get money do we get uh, sort of prestige for that yes I think we do. So we've sold 2,000 copies just over of the many geek cupboards, which is wonderful. I'm very happy about that. Oh, we have failed to do research. We haven't learned anything. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that happens sometimes. That does happen. So errors, we're going to get more errors. We've lost writing experience and we're down on speed. Oh, well, I mean, that's not very good, is it? Okay. <laughs> Right, what do we do about Jeff Robot? So this is more about sort of, uh, rather than a big action kind of story, rather than it being a bit like a sort of a cinematic piece, um, it's more about, yeah, the depth of characters and all that kind of stuff. So world building, not so much. Maybe bring that down. So yeah, maybe like that. 35% plot. And then, yeah, the dialogue, the depth of the characters, the interaction between Jeff and the other people. Yeah, there we go. And the world building is okay. In fact, maybe just move that up a bit. I don't know, 38, 42, and then 20 for setting. Yeah, okay. And the protagonist. Again, we can't change the gender of the protagonist. A little bit weird. Don't know why we can't change that. But uh, yeah, it, it's Jeff It's Jeff Robot. Obviously, it's Jeff Robot. What random names do come up, by the way, out of pure interest? Leandro, Remington, like the like the Razors, Zayden, Ray, uh Dominic Padilla, Madrana. Okay, so yeah, nothing too completely wild and out there. But uh, yeah, we will go for Jeff Robot, please. There we go. Jeff Robot, you're in. Um, and yeah, it's going to be the other way around. It's going to be a different type of book, this. Because it's about the impacts of technology and sort of yourself and identity and such like. Um, so yeah, let's bring it all a bit like this, look. It can be about this. Psychological complexity. In fact, yes, it's more about that kind of thing. And... Um, Let's leave it, I mean, I kind of see it being not simple literary style. Maybe bring it more a little bit like that. We'll have sort of 60-40 for that. But yeah, it's all about sort of um, the characters. Limited number of characters, limited setting. And yeah, the feelings of the feelings of poor Jeff Robot as he realises that is he just a machine or is he a person kind of thing. So yeah, we'll go for that. I've got no idea what I'm doing. I'm just making this up as I go along. It's brilliant. We've lost... A thousand? Why did we lose a thousand? Oh, we won the duel against Chappie. Oh, okay. We got, we did give him some money. Uh, rating of our book 5.8. Rating of the opponent's book 2.7. Oh, okay. So we did get some money. We got some money. We sold 2,000 copies of our book and we've got 727 money. But we made 620 money <laughs> from our bet with Chappie. Okay. Um, right. 
Why why did that not? Why did we, why have we not got much money from our two thousand book sales? We're charging you know tuppence a piece or whatever. Okay, fine. Um, okay, let's run time on nice and quick because we know what's kind of going on now. We just need to kind of run on to the next exciting thing that we need to make a decision about. A bit like this plot selection. Okay, heart of the machine. Jeff Robot, a 35-year-old AI developer, creates the world's first robot to pass the Turing test. No, no, Jeff Robot is the robot in my mind. Uh, 1923, Jeff Robot, a 35-year-old investor, falls into a hole in the basement of his laboratory and discovers an ancient mechanism of unknown origin, or periphery. Jeff Robot is a research astronaut. In a galaxy far, far away, he discovers the planet Dichlos, inhabited by intelligent insects. No, no, no. This one then, maybe. Okay, so Jeff Robot creates the first robot to pass the Turing test. And maybe he calls that robot Jeff. And it becomes Jeff Robot. Okay, game. I had a plot in my mind, game. Okay, so we get 50 back for that. New generation of devices. Today, the Lit Tech Company introduced a new generation of typewriters. I authors worldwide eagerly anticipate the opportunity to immerse themselves in a new era of creativity with these innovative devices. Okay. Oh, oh right, so we can buy things. Oh yeah, can we have one? Can we, there's a shop? Nobody told oh, there's a shop. Okay, hang on a minute, can we buy plants? I mean, other important things as well, but can we buy plants? I don't think we can. Um, okay, so that, for 500 of our 727 monies, will give us a 5% speed increase. But these here give us that, and they also give us other modifiers. That's what, five... Uh, hang on, can we see? Uh, ah, 5% experience modifier for writing. And that is a 5... Oh, and a 5% chance of successful research, which we didn't do last time. I think we save our money. I think let's save up courses. We can go on different courses. Basic grammar course, error probability. Oh, this is wonderful. There's different courses that we can go on. Oh, this is brilliant. Oh, and here's where we unlock the focuses and things. Ah, okay. They cost prestige and money. Okay, so if we want to go down, uh, yeah, like counterculture, it will cost 400 monies and 100 prestige. Down here, it's costing a lot of money. Okay. We've already got technologies. As a th we work on technologies now. And then themes. These are new themes as well. Okay, right, so mutants and historical figures and vampires and everything else. Crikey's. <laughs> Look at these down here. This is an interesting mix of things, isn't it? Um, and then just at the bottom there, Asia. Just you know, generically, an entire massive, massive land. But okay, that's fine. You know, th who knows? Millions and millions of square miles of, of land and peoples and cultures and everything. Just kind of bracketed under there. But okay, that's fine. Um, right, okay, that's good. We won't buy one of those now, I don't think. I don't think we will. So we're going to do this. I'm writing key scenes. I think now we're going to pick the climax of the story. Sentient AI. Jeff creates first AI capable of experiencing emotions. He faces a moral dilemma when his creation starts asking questions about itself. Okay, yeah, we'll go for that. Now, bear in mind, it's probably, what, 1997, 1998 by now? So, you know, I mean, a lot of these things will have been written now in our time. But maybe back in, back, you know, what's that? Almost 30 years ago? The, there weren't many books about this? I don't know. Uh, the corporation Jeff works for wants to use achievements to create an army of ruthless robots, machines of war, or battle with the creator. Jeff creates anthropomorphic robots. After developing consciousness, the robots try to break free. Jeff does everything in his power to stop them. Oh. Oh, that's... No, I like that. That's what we're going for. Sentient AI. We're going for that, please. So, yeah, we're still pretty well clear of Andre there. Sophia's drop right back down she's plummeted right back down but okay and now the ending okay so what do we do for the ending so new beginning jeff begins to treat his creatures like people people are afraid of robots and refuse to accept them jeff found his own city where humans and robots are equal that sounds amazing rise of the machine the machines take control and jeff becomes a leader of the resistance <laughs> okay okay right so we've got terminator going on love and iron Robots soon become an integral part of society, helping and caring for people. Robots replace factory workers, but at the same time, food has become almost free. The era of prosperity has come. Okay, that sounds quite good. 
That sounds quite good. That's people sort of welcoming robots in. Among the machines is Jeff abandons his normal life to live among robots. He falls in love with a robot named Kara and then human and AI. Jeff finds common ground with the corporation. Military developments are curtailed while peace oriented robotics is flourishing. Oh, all these sound pretty good, except maybe Rise of the Machines. Um, I mean, maybe that look, new beginning. So people don't accept the robots. And so he has to go away and start his own city where humans and robots are equal. And maybe that could trigger like, you know, the robot freedom movement or whatever. Let's go for that. There we go. We'll see if that works. Might be terrible. I've got no idea. We are racking up the errors here. We are flying through the errors. Um, okay, pause time. Can we interact with the other people? Can we say, what does that do? Oh, that's just a profile of you. Okay, that's fine. Your typewriter is your grandfather's typewriter. What's our typewriter? Can we find out? Oh, we've got our grandfather's typewriter as well. Oh, cracky. <laughs> really? We're writing on that thing. Okay, fine. Um, what have you got? Have you got your grandfather? Yep, you've not upgraded your typewriter either. And neither have you. Okay. They've all got their own profiles, look. Hates hockey. Loves baseball. Believes that she has a soul. Uh, oh, crack, yeah, she's, she's got a whole profile. Everyone's got their own profiles to them. Uh, okay, okay, well, this is fine. Right, run time back on again, because we're nearly at the end. Okay, Jeff Robot and the Flashy Lights. Sounds okay. 44 errors. Now, here we go. We could hire somebody. We could hire um, Eleanor Davis for 200 monies. I edit, therefore I am. I'm sure that's correct, Eleanor. Uh, you look very smiley and wonderful. Um, but you can clear up quite a lot of errors. It will cost 500 monies. That's quite a lot of money. Maybe we come down to you. Maybe we come down to you. Uh, hang on. So four per week. You share. Ah, you also share experience. She does not share the experience she gets. Whereas you do. And you're a bit cheaper. Do you know what? Abdul, you also look smiley and happy. We're going to pick you. 150, no, 300 monies, 150 prestige. But we might get more prestige out of it if our book is better and not riddled with errors. So, yeah, okay, let's go for you. Start editing. So, we've spent some money. That's fine. That comes down. We know that was going to happen. So, this is all good. So, the errors. Oh, hang on a minute. Successful book. Fallen Leaves by Jack Dean is looking good. Despite the low ratings, the book is selling well. Readers seem to miss the drama genre. It, I mean, drama is where it's going, isn't it? But we're quite good at sci-fi. But okay, that's fine. Uh, ah, Sophia's published a book. Sophia has published a book. There's now only 24 errors in the book. I'm now very tempted to do it ourselves just to get that down below 20, possibly. So start editing again. Can we bring it down below 20? Uh, it's not that long, I don't think. Come on, come on. Down to 20, maybe? 19, perfect. Um, it's not that good a book, but we will publish it. Here we go. <laughs> 300 prestige. Ah, okay. We are leveling up with things. I don't know what this means. I'm not quite sure what this means for us, but okay. So that's good. Critic reviews that too. Oh, it's it's not good. It's not good. The author clearly messed up his priorities. <laughs> Excuse me, his. How dare you fable focus. In his story, settings turn out to be more important than dialogues. I turn the settings down. I turn them down. I put dialogues up. A good idea, poor execution, horrifying. <laughs> Sorry, Hype Horizon. Um, oh dear, yeah. Right, mistakes and inconsistencies make the book impossible to read. Oh, it's not good. It's not good. Jeff Robot and the Flashy Lights hasn't gone well. We are in the lead, but it's not gone well. Okay, right. What can we do with... And like, What's that do? Oh, that's just our books. That's what we've written. So that's us. So do we get anything for this? Do we get sort of better... I assume just if we're level one in speed, we're just better. Status drinking tea? <gasps> yes. Betty. Oh, also, happy 40th birthday, Betty. I missed that one. Um, yeah, p perfect. Yes, we would have been drinking tea. Betty is having some lovely tea. Marvellous. Um, Grayson says, After reading Jeff Robot and the Flashy Lights, I forgot what joy was. Thanks for this great oblivion. Oh, we can be rude. I'm not being rude. Uh, thanks for your review, Donovan. We're going to be polite to you. 
And then Attica says, your book is like a warm and cosy spot. <laughs> okay, thank you for the review. I think it's done, isn't it? I think it's done. Although, even though Jeff Robot only got a 3.1, it's still better than everybody else's by the look of it. It's still not too bad. Um, so yeah, can we see what worked and what didn't? 1.36k sales. Can we say what worked? We haven't got enough money to buy a fancy typewriter. A little bit more. A tiny bit more money. Oh uh, yeah, can we message them? Ah, here we go. Team up against. Challenge to a duel. Play rock, paper, scissors. Sabotage or improve relationship. Let's play rock, paper, scissors with Andre there. Because yeah, we get on. Me and me and him. He challenges to a bet. He lost it. He paid up. Fair enough. I like it. Let's play rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Make a bet. Oh, we can bet money on it. Um, okay. Let's bet, I don't know, 25 monies on uh, rock. There we go. Offer a deal. Are you going to go for it? No. <laughs> Never mind. It was worth a go. I think maybe we need to write a book. They're writing a fantasy racism book. Uh, oh, and Andre's moved into a fantasy sex book. Good grief. Um, okay. Do we... Maybe all well, the drama booths might be done by the time we're finished. What does that do? Display point gain loss. Oh, I see. Now I want that on. That's quite helpful. Um, what's that do? What's that? Modifiers. Ah, okay. So this is what we get. Right. So we get plus 5% speed because we're a creator. That's quite good. But... Yes, we get less experience for research because of our creator. Um, nothing going on there and nothing going on in there at the minute. Um, yeah, 10% so sales for drama, 13 weeks. Sales for drama goes up for another 82 weeks. We might possibly be done by then. We might be able to get a book out and catch the end of that boost, but... We have 5% sales for sci-fi because we are a creator. Uh, can we see what they're like? Are you a creator? You're a slacker. Okay. <laughs> You're romantic and you are a pedant. So why did they all go for sci-fi at the start? That was a bit weird. We're going to write another sci-fi because we're good at that. Um, sci-fi. Okay. So parallel worlds goes well. Where's the other one we just did? Where's the technology we just... Oh, technologies doesn't have anything against it at all. Um, how about time travel? That's got to be a good thing as an interest. Question mark, question mark, question mark. Was that a thing we could buy? Uh, was that a focus? What? What's that thing down there? I don't know what the interest thing is. I feel like we should buy a focus. I feel like we should buy one and just see what happens with it. Um, let's buy uh, a cheap one. Scientific approach, maybe. Can we do that? I don't even know what this is. I'm going to buy it because why not? Eh? We'll buy scientific approach. Hooray! We bought a thing. <laughs> what does that now mean that we can do? So sci-fi, it's not in here. So if we go for time travel, um, there must be another focus somewhere else. I'm not quite sure. Okay, so aim this at everybody again. Really, I just don't want to aim it at kids. But, you know, just don't read the book, kids. It's fine. You'll find it dull. Um, okay, so science fiction time travel. Um, okay, what do we call this one? Let's let's pick a name for our lovely new science fiction time travel book. Let's call it Forward to the Past. I quite like that. So some guy gets in a time travel machine and goes back an incredibly long way. Let's say 200 years. And then he finds out that if he does some repairs, he can move forward another 100 years. So he has to go forward to the past. So he can you know, get back 100 years closer to his own time. And then maybe when he goes forward to the past a bit, he can then work out another thing and then go forward to the present, maybe. That could be the sequel. I don't know. But OK, I like that. 55 weeks. We shall do some research on it. I don't know. Actually, hang on. We're going to finish the sort of round. We're going to finish the round off because there's not that long left. We've got, I can't work out the numbers. I'm trying, while I was saying that, I was trying to work out the numbers. There's one shy of 40, so 39 plus another eight. So what's that? 39, 40, no, 47. There's only 47 weeks left until we end the sort of the whatever it is. Yeah, this current sort of phase. So we'll start writing this and we'll do the research on it. But 
I kind of feel like we're not going to finish it. Maybe we carry it on to the next one. Okay, here we go. So science fiction time travel, very original, but we know it works. Right, so you're doing all the stuff. You're, yeah, sort of researching other things. Uh, oh, okay. So crime is looking well. Crime is doing quite well. Okay, we're not writing a crime book. It's a bit of a shame. Oh, somebody's published a book, I think. Okay, the research went well. Sci-fi and time travel is a perfect combo. Time travel and all will have a moderate effect on sales. And time travelers can use their knowledge of the future for personal gain, which creates moral dilemmas within the plot. Okay, uh, so error is going to come down. We get research experience. Writing experience goes up. Speed is up a tiny bit. Okay, that was pretty good. Again, we can't change the gender of the protagonist. Is that something we have to unlock? I'm not quite sure. Um, okay. The protagonist name, uh, we're <laughs> he can be called Barty. He can be called uh, Barty, Barty McSky. That'll do. Yeah, Barty McSky. And the story's going to have to be quite... I mean, it all needs to be in. We need the story because it's going to be complicated. Um, let's uh, Maybe dialogues can just be dropped a little bit, maybe. Let's get dialogues down to 20. So it's more about the story and what's going on, the world that he's ended up in when he's gone back in time and such like. Let's go for that. I mean, I'm sure the in-game kind of things will completely blat our plan there. But there we go. We'll go for that. Look, just drop that. Let's give it like that. Look, 2% more on the dialogue there. Just see if that helps. Right, Barty McSky, off your pop. Um, what do we do with this? Elements of risk? Uh, yeah, right. Do you know what? Yeah, there is a bit of risk in time travel. Let's move it a bit more like that. Um, and yeah, well, it's going to be fateful events, isn't it? It's got to be a bit more epic because that's kind of what it's about, isn't it? It's about time travel and affecting everything. Uh, and it's got to be complex because, again, time travel is a complicated thing. If we push that back to 25, maybe push that back a little bit as well to 35. That seems OK. It's got to have some kind of feelings and going on. And maybe a tiny bit of romance. Maybe he could, I don't know, save his I don't know, save his aunt or something. I don't know. Right, there we go. We'll go to next. We'll see if that works out. Right. So now we're working on forward to the past. <laughs> we're still miles ahead of everybody else. But yeah, in not very long, we're going to go to the next stage. But okay, let's see what we do. So, right, plot selection. Here we go. What has the game determined is going to be our plot? Uh, Barty McSky. A 28-year-old talented cyber scientist works on a time machine project in a secret government lab. Amid a technological time race, each country strives to be the first to create a functioning chrono portal. A new takeoff, people built a colony on Mars, astronaut geologist Barty McSky discovers an artifact belonging to an ancient dragon civilization. What? A web of time. In alternate past where the Nazis won, scientist Barty McSky constructs a time machine. Oh, okay. That one is Government Lab. I'm not going to go for that one with dragons in it, because that sounds bonkers. Or Web of Time. Okay, maybe we go for that one, an alternate past. And then he's got to he's got to go forward to the past a bit. I don't know, we'll go for that one. There we go, that sounds fun. That sounds potentially quite fun. Developing deep plot twists, introduction of the protagonist. Okay, things are looking good, but in not very many weeks, yeah, it's all going to finish. Uh, okay. Right, what's the climax of the book? Intervention. Bart is planning to go back in time to intervene with the course of World War II. Due to his personal fears, Barty decides to get rid of the time machine. Manual upgrade. Barty kidnaps Nazi leaders from the past to replace their older versions in the future. Let's just do the intervention one. Let's do that one. It's all got a bit sort of World War II interacting rather than anything else, but okay. Um, here we go. We're going to... Um, it's going to be the year 2000 soon. Here we go. Look, hang on. Oh, there you go. Successful book. Please tell me it's... Oh, it's fantasy. Oh, they're writing fantasy books. Botheration. That's not fair. Um, okay, never mind. Right, fantasy. 5% sales increase. Okie doke. Um, yeah, look. It's going to be... I just pressed spacebar then. Something popped up and I pressed spacebar. And I don't know what it was. Uh, oh, no. I think I started writing the ending. I've picked whatever the default ending was, but we didn't see it because I pressed spacebar to pause the game. But spacebar is also the sort of confirmed decision thing. So it popped up as I pressed spacebar. Ah, 
Okay, we don't know what the ending is there. <laughs> it might be awful. I don't know. Uh, right, I'm going to press the button from now on. Sorry, Spacebar. But here we go. Look, we're going to go through to the year 2000, everybody. Here we go, Millennium Book. Uh, end of stage. Right, so we've got 5007. So the best writer in terms of prestige was Betty, of course. Best writer in terms of rating was Betty. The best book was the first one we did, The Many Geek Cupboards. Okay, so 5.8. We've, we've not done well. We've not set the word of literature alight here, folks. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, the worst writer was Daniel. Away with you, Daniel. And the worst book was Daniel with Echo of Stars, a fantasy racism book that got 0.9. <laughs> I can see why. Uh, okay, the end of the next stage is the 1st of January in the year 2004. Okay, so another four years. So now what happens? Oh, okay. Um... You did, hang on, did, what happened there? Did somebody just do rock, paper, scissors to see who went through? I think they might have done. So now we've got eight people. We've now got eight people, including us, in the next stage. So the Betty's gone through, Andre and Sophia then. We've got Ian McLaren, hello Ian, uh, Zariah Pitt. Why couldn't we have picked that portrait for Betty? She, and not that you don't look magnificent, but you look magnificent as well. Daniel Mitchell... Yes. Are you still in? Jeff Fishers and Dan Crown. Um, okay, start next stage. I thought... Oh, no, hang on. Now I'm confused. Um, oh, Ian's come in. Right. Ah, oh, there's a different goal now. Write the best book. Two players who, whose book's got the highest rating progress to level four. So prestige is now back down to nothing. That's been kind of cleared out for level five. And now the goal is to write the best book. Okay. Right. So do we start again? Do we start... Okay, pause. Pause time. Pause. Is time paused? Yes, it's 28th of February in the year 2000. Um, right, so the book we were writing is now just gone. It's just been annihilated from existence. Oh, okay, botherations. I was enjoying doing that one. Okay, sci-fi. <laughs> time travel. Uh, oh, interest. Oh, that's what that is. Right, so it, the gender mix is absolutely fine and the age is okay. I kind of feel like maybe we should aim it at... Add, ah, there we go. Look, yeah, because we've done our research, we can figure out the best appeal. Ah, right, okay, so we can aim it at any particular age, and it's fine. I mean, adults have the bigger age range between 18 and 60, so they're going to likely sell more things. So, yeah, okay, let's do that. Target uh, an adult audience, please. Um, I kind of feel like we should carry on writing what we, what we wanted to do. So, yeah, forward uh, to the past but maybe don't go down the whole sort of nazi route of things that was a bit weird um okay so yeah confirm that please so yeah do your research again this is fine this research is good got what are we going ah, sci-fi superpowers from andre uh, sophia's doing horror middle ages and ian is doing sci-fi myths okay intriguing it might work right success hurrah errors are down a bit get some experience writing experience speed oh focus points plus one total one okay we have a focus point i don't know what we do with that but okay you've also learned there is the so-called grandfather paradox according to which genuine events in the past can lead to logical inconsistencies in the present yeah indeed wibbly wobbly timey wimey it's all fine um Okay, so here we go. We're, we're going to bring him back. Uh, Barty McSky is once again the protagonist. And we'll do what we did before. It was, was it 39, 39? There we go, like that. So not so bothered about the dialogue. It's more about the story and the world that Barty finds himself in. So okay, and then oh, this was something like... So that was it. Something a bit like this. Bring that really far down. Like that, look. That'll do. Yeah, let's go for that. Oh, now, oh... This is the focus thing that we had. I see. Right. So what if we went down scientific approach? What if we did that? Because that might mean that we get a more scientific look at the whole idea of time travel. Let's go for that, shall we? Can we undo it? Yes. Okay. Originality. Uh, I don't really know what these do, but okay. Deep characters we haven't got because we're not focusing much on characters. Charismatic protagonist. I mean... Yeah, you know, Barty McSky is quite charismatic, but we're not going down that route. Scientific approach. It can be a more sort of... Um, although, is it scientific? Is it scientific? Hang on, can we go back here? 
can we go can we go back again uh it's kind of reset everything oh okay i thought it'd be where it was before but okay maybe we do want maybe we do want the characters to be charismatic but is that what people are looking for in a science fiction it's more about the story and the world isn't it yeah okay let's put it back where it was we'll put you know what 38 and then 38 there we go that seems a bit better that can stay where it is uh we will have um i don't know what idea value is we're not doing deep characters or charismatic protagonists scientific uh, i'm going to pick originality and i don't know what that means but okay start writing <laughs> uh sophia collins challenges you to a duel okay we're making a bet of 364 dollars if the rating of your next book is higher than hers, we get 364 minutes. Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. Why not? Let's go for it, shall we? If we do win that, we could buy a fancy new typewriter thing, which would be exciting. Okay, so we are flying through. Here we go, right, plot selection. So we've seen, I don't know, hang on. Time Patrol we saw before. We didn't see nightmares before. Barty McSky, a 43-year-old inventor, creates a device to travel through time. His friend Smith warns him about the dangers of time paradoxes but Barty won't listen, or Web of Time is the Nazi thing. Oh, maybe that one. It's a little bit quantum leapy, isn't it? Uh, yeah, okay, we'll go down that one. Let's go down that route. That could be intriguing. Um, we're doing pretty well in terms of prestige, although that's not relevant at all this time round, because it's the better book rather than the most prestige. Okay, so what do we do for the climax of the book? So negligence, a mistake in the past causes Barty to lose his friend in the present. Oh no, falling apart. Barty is too addicted to time jumping and now his body is falling apart. His best friend is his last hope or new acquaintances. Barty jumps into the future and crashes the time machine but ends up in the world of cannibals. No, <laughs> no, no, maybe, maybe that one. He gets too addicted to time jumping and now his body is kind of giving up and his friend has to save him. Uh, yeah, this is all about friends, and we kind of limited the amount of dialogue there was, but okay. <laughs> That's a bit unfortunate, but I'm sure we'll muddle through. It's going to be fine. Uh, okay, here we go. Visual images, working on the dynamics of things, creating tension, and now the ending. Okay, Barty is losing his limbs too fast. Smith fails to get the cure in time. Okay, so Barty McSky just kind of dies due to time travel. Difficult choice. In order to save his life, Barty decides to go back in time before he got interested in time travel. Ah, paradoxes. Friend. Smith saves the protagonist and they return to the present. They decide to travel through time together. Volunteer. Barty regains consciousness in the hospital. He is just a volunteer who had a new drug for insomnia tested on him. Everything that happened to him is just a side effect. No. <laughs> he woke up and it was all a dream and everybody threw the book at the wall in fury. Or world domination. While travelling in the future, Barty finds a sports almanac. <laughs> That's what I was going for. He becomes a billionaire in the present and rules the world. No, not that. Um, maybe, maybe that one, look. Smith saves the protagonist and they return to the present. They decide to travel through time together on a fun journey, going forward to the past, if they've previously gone back to the past first. Anyway, there we go. We'll go for that one. So we're on 500 prestige. We need really i'd like it to be over five if the book rating could be over five that would be quite good 51 errors we have got a chunk of money we could get abdul back on the case and you could remove a few errors for us two months it's pr or because prestige doesn't matter now maybe we get eleanor on it maybe we could do get you on it you do five a week you're going to sort between 8 and 40. You're a bit more expensive in terms of money, but then we might win some of that back with our bet anyway. Do you know what, Eleanor? In you come. Nine years experience of doing editing. We will have you, please. So, start editing. Yes, absolutely. So, the errors should come down quite a bit. If we can get it below 20, would be brilliant. I don't think it's going to happen. Um, 23. 70 percent i could get published the book publish the book uh 300 prestige speed our writing's gone up to level two research is level two editing is level one we didn't get anything for that 
because she doesn't share her Red Tink experience with us, which is a bit of a shame, but never mind. Um, the critic reviews are 5.3. Yes, we're over five. Um, the author couldn't have chosen a better theme in genre. Not bad, but says blunt book banter. And Quill in Korea says boring. Characters are unconvincing. What do the people think? Oh, OK. Oh, we've got a scroll. The book is slightly better than furniture assembly instructions. OK. I, I, is that a compliment? I'm not quite sure. I like the book. Good value for a price of a cup of tea, it says there. I just spelt wrong. Knowledge is the most important thing, or rather the only thing we own. And the author, with his, again, no, intellectual baggage and erudition, is a truly rich <sighs> Whoa, man. Books like this are not popular with readers. Therefore, they have a small circulation. This book is mediocre, uh, mediocre at best. Oh, okay. Uh, Lida, that's a bit rude, but okie doke. Um, so, forward to the past got 5.5. Okay, and uh, Andre's book got 1.7. Astro Megopolis 2 <laughs> got 1.7. Uh, Leanne says no words, just admiration. Uh, this is confusing because it says, and now it says Gideon. Oh, now it says from Juan. And then Juan, it says from Beckham. Okay, that changes a bit. That's a bit weird, but okay. Beckham, thanks for your review. And then Aurelio says something, but now it's from Avery. And um, Betty, after forward to the past, all I have left is sadness and a question. Did anyone other than you really need this? Thank you for your review. I'm not going to be rude to you because we don't get anything out of that. Nothing good comes of that. Um, okay, yeah, so our prestige is flying up. And we've... <sighs> what was that that just popped up? Having spacebar as the confirmation button is not a great thing because it doesn't help when things pop up like that and I press spacebar. Um, okay. As a final treat, because we are going to wrap things up, I think maybe we get ourselves a new typewriter. Can we get one of these? We've got 1,300 monies. We could buy one of these. We could get ourselves a Blitz 55. So, uh, yeah, although, hang on, what if we wait for the, um, what if we wait for Sophia's book? If we wait for Sophia's book and she doesn't have a better review, a sort of a rating than we do, we'll win that bet. We'll then have one and a half thousand money to buy the next level up of typewriter. Maybe that's what we do. Okay, um, I think we sort of get the idea of what we're doing. So we're just gonna keep writing sci-fi. That's our thing. So science fiction cyberpunk. There you go, that seems pretty good. Aim that at probably adults, I would say. That's probably a good mix, isn't it? Um, so yeah, sci-fi, cyberpunk, 49 wigs. Um, okay, right, what do we call this one? We're going to fly through this, really. I'm just doing this to pass some time until we get the bet resolved with Sophia because I just want to get the money to buy a fancy typewriter. But uh, uh, okay, right, yeah, what do we call our sci-fi cyberpunk novel? Let's call it Northampton 2177. It can be set in the mighty cyberpunk metropolis of Northampton Town in the year 2177, of course. I quite like that. Let's go for that. There we go. So it's after a city rather than a kind of a person or an event or an occurrence. It's kind of looking at the city itself. That sounds quite good. Right, we're doing the research. How, ah, here we go. Oh, <laughs> space bar, stop that. Okay, right. Confirmation, confirm that. Pause time. I thought we just, are we doing more research? I think we might be doing more research. That space bar thing is a bit irritating to be honest. Okay, um, right, we've won the jewel. We've won the jewel. We get 364 money. We've now got 1,700 money. Let's give ourselves a shiny new typewriter. What can we get in the future? Oh, that we can't even see. We can't even see. 695 weeks the future things become available. Um, we will get the letter boom, please. So plus 5% speed, chance of successful research up by 5%, and writing experience up by 5%. Yeah, can we have one of those, please? Can we get a lovely new typewriter? Thank you so much. So can we see what we're using? We're using letter boom. Okay, what's everyone else using? Grandfather's typewriter, grandfather's typewriter, grandfather's typewriter. Okay, so we've got the most advanced one. Okay, that's good. Um, What we'll do is we're going to fly through to the end of Northampton 2177. 
We're just going to see how that does. I kind of feel like now we've started it, we should wrap it up. So we're just going to kind of get through it all and then see what happens at the end. Will it beat forward to the pass rating of 5.5? Let's go and find out. Okay, I don't know if Northampton 2177 is going to be a very good book. The result is 33.33% which says bad after it, which is probably not great. We have spent quite a bit of time getting rid of errors. And weirdly, when it had multiple errors, when it had over 50 errors, the result was over 50%. And now we've cleared the errors down, it's bad, which doesn't seem to make any sense. I thought maybe if I had less errors in, it would be better. But okay, I think we're done. We couldn't afford any kind of fancy editing people. So we had to do a couple of rounds of editing ourselves. So let's publish our book and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so speed went up. That's okay, and research has gone up to level three, which is wonderful, and editing has gone up to level two. So we're a little bit better at editing, yet we took six months editing that thing. It was a long time, we had to do, we did three rounds of it in fact, just to try and get the errors down. Okay, let's see how we did, 4.5, oh, 6.5, okay, that's, that's okay, that's fine. People 4.9, 4.3, 5 5.1, do you know what? We're going to take that because it puts us at the best, you know, into the top two positions. So I'm going to pause time for a minute. Um, yeah, so forward to the past 5.5, Northampton 2177 got a five. Okay, you know what? Yeah, that's okay. That's fine. We're so near to the end. We're so near to the end of the stage. I'm very tempted to just sort of fly through and do the next bit. Just do the next bit and get through to the end as well. Just kind of complete this stage because we've got, again, what's that? Another... 40, 48, um, I got a minute, 45 weeks is that? Something like that. I'm not quite sure. I think it might be 45 weeks ish. So I don't know if it's enough time to finish writing another book. So it could potentially be a good idea if we went over here and went on a course. Because I imagine that takes time. Um, yeah, three and a half months, which I think. We could probably get this done. So yeah, what do we go for then? We've got 1,800 money from book sales. We could get a course under our belt. That'll be quite good. A 50% chance to boost our luck. Uh, we could get sales for crime. No, we're not a crime writer. Um, plus 10% error correction during editing. That might be quite good. 10% audience growth. We have got a decent audience going on. Uh, that's to do with horror. Uh, minus 10% probability of making a priority mistake or research speed, chance of successful research. That could be quite good. It's either going to be that one. So 10% error probability. So make it a little bit less likely that we make errors or have better research. And sometimes if we get better research, we then do sometimes see it, it says, yep, errors are down 8%, 9% anyway. And we get other stuff. Let's go for that. Let's buy a research masterclass, please. We will go and do some research. Okay, so we just hang around on the research. How do we know when that ends? Are we done? Oh, hang on a minute. People are angry with us. I think I'm delighted about what you do. Thank you. That's good. Uh, Mac is not happy. Thanks for your review, Mac. Um, I don't really like to read, but I read your book with great pleasure. Thank you. Jessica, you're very welcome. Wonderful. Um, okay, yeah, so... When does our course finish? How do we know what we're doing? <laughs> Are we on the course? I'm not entirely sure, but I don't know if there's any point starting a new book. Because I suppose we could just do the research and get research experience. Does, does that count? Or does it only count at the end? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Um, can we do anything else? Can we buy other things? Is it worth buying the mutants theme and having a science fiction mutant book? That might be quite fun. Let's go for that. Yeah, we'll have that, please. I like that they do the little calculations down there. Like the art sort of actually writing it down. Um, okay, I mean, we'll start work on it. So sci-fi and mutants. There we go. We'll aim that. Uh, oh, that could be everybody, though, couldn't it? Young adults might like that. Uh, that can be everybody. And um, let's call it um, the... Oh, I was trying to think of a... Hang on a minute. Let me go and think of a decent name for this. What could be quite fun? Let's call it Hex Men. And it could be about a group of mutant superheroes who really, really like playing hex-based board games. I quite like that. We'll call it Hex Men. That sounds fun. I don't think we're going to finish Hex Men. But we might get experience from the research and all that kind of stuff. So we'll get the research done. Let's see what happens. So yeah, the time is ticking by. Look at this. Uh, we are going to go through to the next level, I think. 
We're going to get through, which is going to be fun. So here we go. We've got, what, 13 weeks left. We did the research. We got some experience for it. Um, okay, sci-fi mutants, perfect combination. It's going to have a moderate effect on sales. Okay, so maybe we should tweak that then. In Mikhail Bulgakov's novel Heart of a Dog, an experiment is described in which an ordinary dog is transformed into a human being. Okay, there you go. It, you know, it's a game and it's educational as well. We've all learned a thing there. Wonderful. Um, I mean, this might possibly be a little bit kind of irrelevant, but okay. Um, I see world building being down and possibly these being a bit like that. Yeah, there we go. Like that. Oh, hang on. I didn't give the protagonist a name. Um, Okay, right, who should, be the, who should be the main Hex person who just loves those Hex games? It's got to be Professor Hex, hasn't it? The story can be written from his point of view as he tries to recruit all the Hex men and make them work in a school kind of thing to teach young people who love Hex gaming as well that have got mutanty powers. So yeah, that'll do. That's fine. Yeah, we'll go for that. Uh, this thing, again, I don't think we're going to complete it, but um, maybe that can be down the middle? We can have a bit of emotional tension and some action. Intimacy, I would say bring that down a bit. That's not going to be so much, I don't think. And a complex plot, maybe a little bit more complex. Possibly a bit like, bring that down a tiny bit, maybe. Make it a tiny bit more actiony. But we do want some sort of, you know, uh, feelings going on between the characters as they come to terms with their, you know, hex-based powers and such. So there we go, that'll do. And... Okay, another book. Drama again. There was a sci-fi book that pushed up sci-fi sales. Right, here we go. So working on the thing. And in, what, four weeks it's all going to finish? Okay, I mean, let's pick a thing here. A journalist goes to a remote village to investigate rumours about mutants. In 2042, a world ex uh, the world experienced a nuclear war that left behind only desolate wastelands of mutants. Professor Hex, a scientist, travels the world in search for a cure for mutation. No, 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 no. Professor Hex, embrace it. Or Mosquito, a scientist invents a teleport. During an experiment, a mosquito gets into the device. <laughs> the DNA of the mosquito mixes with the scientist's DNA. Um, we're going to go to this one, mutants. Remote village, investigate about mutants. And here we go, one week, and that completes that stage. Okay, so we're through with our book of 5.5. So the best writer, in terms of prestige, we got most. Best writer, we did. Best book was Forward to the Past. Worst writer was Ian. Sorry, Ian. And the worst book was Ian's book called Stargaze, which got one. 40 errors? Ian, come on now. Did you even bother looking at it? Did you check it at all? Okay. So another four years into the end of the next stage. Um, okay, we replaced them. Oh, they do like a... Ah, okay, right. They do like a little sort of, uh, yeah, rock, paper, scissors thing to see who goes through. So Ian went through, fortunately. And then we've got Cormac MacArthur coming in with an amazing hat. Okay, so I think, yeah, we're going to be joined by a new person. Okay, so Sophia's still with us then. Um, ah, level goal number four to write the maximum number of books. The two players with the maximum number of books progress to level three. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, right, so pause time. Pause, pause, pause. Um, I had a party at the ranch yesterday. I decided not to invite you, says Cormac MacArthur. Bit rude, Cormac, but okay. Um, so yeah, they've started writing their book. So I quite like the fact there are different challenges each time. It's not just, okay, yeah, write the best books, make the most money. This one is write the most books. So they could be rubbish, they could be really awful books as long as you churn out any old rubbish. So I imagine what you do in this is not do the research because that takes ages. So just you know, churn anything out, throw out any old nonsense. Don't kind of, you know, error check it or anything. Just get the books out to progress to level three. I mean, can we see what happens in level three? Can we see what? Oh, there's other people in level three. Look, there's people already doing so. Oh, we have to work our way up. Hang on a minute. Isn't Shakespeare supposed to be the one that we take on in level one? Um, possibly. Oh, Shakespeare isn't in level one anymore. Oh, it's like a... Are they all kind of getting relegated and stuff? Oh, they are, look. They're back down. Andre's got banned down to level six. Oh, okay. Right, so it's like a kind of a league system, is it? 
Okay, this is surprising, but okay, no. Uh, I mean, there we are. Yeah, so we, we're on. Yeah, there we are in level four. I think we did okay. We've muddled through far. We've not created any kind of great masterpieces, but I think our books have been okay. We had one slightly duff one, but yeah, most of them I think have been quite good. Well done, Betty. But do you know what? With that done, with Betty now at level four, I think we will wrap things up with our little look at Writer's Rush. I think we have had a pretty good look at the game to see what it's all about and how it works and all that kind of stuff. And it's really good. It's really enjoyable. We have played similar games in the past to this, but normally they're kind of businessy sorts of games. So we played, was it called Scene Makers or something? Something like that, where it's kind of about making TV shows and films and things. And then there are many games a bit like this where you create sort of video games and things. You kind of have a company and you employ people to do various jobs. And in those games, you have the sliders where you pick how much you want to put into that particular thing or that particular thing. And, you know, it's all sort of a bit like this, but this one doesn't have people to pay off like in terms of you know staff and all that kind of stuff you don't sort of build offices and have kind of you know setups and things like that it's more about what you're doing in terms of finding the right combinations of genres and themes and doing what you need to do to get to the next level it's not just a case of right there you go you've made a thing you've earned some money you can pay your staff now make another thing and try and earn more money and pay your staff again it's got different levels with different challenges which I think sets this game apart a little bit, which is quite fun. And you're kind of spending your money on yourself. You're spending it on tech for yourself, like a typewriter upgrade, that kind of stuff. And you spend it on training courses and things. You're not spending it on your buildings and staff and all that kind of stuff. It's all on your author. It's all very sort of focused on the author that you're playing as, which is quite good. I like that. And you know, you can create some crazy kind of uh, genres and themes. We stuck with relatively safe ones I would say we didn't go too far sort of you know too far out of the box we sort of stuck with ones that we sort of thought might work a little bit but I bet there are some out there that are a little bit kind of crazy that will work and that's kind of what these games are about you sort of try and mix the genres and the themes and all that kind of stuff and eventually you might hit on something it'll work and it will catapult you into mega stardom I don't think we quite did that but yeah you know, we gave it a good shot and I think Betty's done quite well she's done okay she's made some good books I mean she's made some pretty rubbish Bushy books as well. I don't think Jeff Robot and the Flashy Lights is going to be one that people talk about in the future. But, you know, the many geek cupboards, that was okay. Four to the Pass is okay. And even Northampton 2177 wasn't too bad at all. So well done, Betty. You've written some good books, but I think we will wrap things up for now. Hopefully you have enjoyed this. If you have, please do leave a like. That would be most marvellous indeed. And also, if you're not already, then please do subscribe to keep up to date with all the other bits and bobs and nonsense that we get up to in the geek cupboard. But for now, thank you very much for joining me in the Geek Cupboard, and I'll see you next time. Right, if we connect to there and open the door, we're going to get vaporized by this laser. And there's an electronic thing, which looks like a sad kind of Game Boy. <laughs> I'm a tiny little sort of sort of stick person in a, in a computer. I can't steer the train as such. And look, we are outside, and we're in a gutter. Oh, happy days. Hello, Leaf.